Okay boys, today we're looking at levers. I found this really great clip from VEA that just gives a perfect overview of levers. So we're going to start there. Levers are a type of simple machine. They can be used to amplify force or distance. A lever is made up of three components. A force arm, which refers to the distance between the point at which the force is applied, and the fulcrum. The fulcrum itself, or axis, and a resistance arm, or the distance between the point where resistance is applied, and the fulcrum. Levers can be classified as either first, second, or third class. First class levers can be used to amplify speed and strength. The fulcrum is between the points of force and the resistance. As the axis point is moved closer to the point where force is applied, the faster the item can travel. If it is moved away from the point of force, this enables a greater level of force to be applied. A second class lever is characterised by having the axis at one end of the lever and the force at the opposite end. The resistance is located between them. Second class levers have long force arms, allowing them to generate great strength. A wheelbarrow is a good example of this type of lever. The third class lever is different again. Like second class levers, the axis is at one end of the lever, but now the resistance sits at the opposite end and the force is between them. Third class levers have long resistance arms, which can generate great speed. Most levers within the body are third class levers, the human arm is a good example. Consider a swimmer doing freestyle or backstroke. The arms are acting as third class levers. The shoulder is the fulcrum, with the force coming from muscles in and attached to the upper arm. And the resistance is the movement of the hands against the water. Because the hands move a greater distance than the upper arm, where the force is generated, but in the same period of time, the speed of the hand movement is considerably greater than that of the upper arm. This is just one example of a third class lever inside the human body. But there are also a range of levers external to the human body used in sport. An example is a tennis racket. It acts as a third class lever. The shoulder of the athlete is the fulcrum. The upper arm and forearm muscles act as the force, and the ball being struck by the face of the racket is the resistance. The laws of physics would suggest that the longer the handle of the racket, that is, the longer the distance between the force and the resistance, the quicker the serve. Although this is true, in reality, the biomechanist must also consider how much control the player has over the ball and therefore the desired accuracy. Over recent times, principles of biomechanics applied to modern technology has led to the development of an optimum range of lengths of the lever from hand to racket. The athlete will have more control with a shorter lever and more speed with a longer one. This potential to generate larger amounts of force with longer levers obviously has to be regulated and every sporting code, every sporting body I suppose has rules regarding the maximum length that its sporting equipment can be. And this is obviously where skill comes in. We've looked at force summation, we've looked at balance and stability, and we've looked at projectile motion so far. We all have access to the same equipment because we can't use longer clubs to generate more speed with our levers therefore we need to use our body to its maximum potential ensure that we have the full length lever from our shoulder right down to the, to the head of the club so we maximise our ability to use the potential of that lever. To examine the science behind a lacrosse shot, we enlisted one of the game's top players, two-time Major League Lacrosse Offensive Player of the Year, Paul Rabel. 
He won the Major League Lacrosse Fastest Shot Competition, registering a world record breaking 111 miles an hour. 111. And Rabel's shots in a game typically average over 100 miles an hour. For a goaltender, that looks like this. To put this in perspective, from over 60 feet away, a 90 mile an hour fastball crosses home plate in less than 44 hundredths of a second. A lacrosse ball fired at 105 miles an hour covers that distance 11% quicker in only 39 hundredths of a second. And shots are often fired from less than 30 feet, shaving the time to react to the ball to under 19 hundredths of a second. The secret to Rabel's blazing shot is a combination of biomechanics and physics. The farther an object is from its axis of rotation, the faster its linear speed. His arm and a 40 inch long stick act as a series of levers, extending the ball as far as 62 inches from the main axis of rotation. Rabel maximizes speeds at the end of the lever with superior biomechanics. As he drives his foot into the turf, friction against the ground allows him to convert his linear momentum into rotational momentum. Rabel conserves this momentum through his hips and torso, rotating his shoulders over 1,300 degrees per second, faster than NHL All-Star Alex Ovechkin rotates on a slap shot.